this is all the gear that I would use if I was through hiking in 2024. Trails like the Appalachian Trail, the Pacific Crest Trail, and the Continental Divide Trail. Some of this gear is pretty common for through hikers, but some of it is gear that you've probably never seen before or considered. I may not be through hiking this year, but I have hiked the Great Divide Trail, and I spent 100 days on trail in 2023 with a bunch of different gear. Starting with the pack, this is the Gossamer Gear Mariposa, and why I think this is an amazing pack for a through hike is because of its versatility. There's not a one size fits all pack for every trail and every person, but the Mariposa comes pretty close, and that's because of three things that it has going for it. First of all, the pack has a ton of capacity. It's 60 liters in volume, which is gonna be more than enough for most people out there, even if you are a bit of a pack rat, and it has a whole bunch of different pockets for storing things on the outside if you do need a little bit more of that accessibility for gear. The second major thing is the modularity of this pack. You have three removable parts, the hip belt, this aluminum stays that act as a frame, and then this foam backing here. The pack starts off at 870 grams all in, and if you remove both the hip belt and the aluminum stays, drops down to 570 grams, and then if you remove this foam backing, it drops down to about 500 grams. What's great about this modularity is that if you're someone who does have a heavier pack, closer to that 40 pound mark, or if you're doing a ton of water carries, like at the beginning of one of the big through hikes through the desert, or you have a bear can, then you can add those aluminum stays in and the hip belt and carry 40, 45 pounds very comfortably. Or if you're running a little bit more ultra, you can remove those modular pieces and save some weight on your pack. That's what I have right here. I have the stays and the hip belt removed. I like the feeling of a hip beltless frameless pack, but I kept the foam for comfort. And even without the stays in the hip belt, the Mariposa carries weight really well. I have 30 pounds in here because I'm in the desert and I had to do a water carry and I carried all my camera gear and it was carrying that weight no problem. The one downside that you probably need to consider if you are looking at the Mariposa is its durability. It's not the most durable pack out there. You will have to baby it a little bit if you want it to last an entire through hike. If you want a pack that's more durable and can carry a little bit more weight, then check out the Durston Kakwa series of packs, either the 40 or the 55, depending on how much volume you need. On the outside of the pack let's quickly run through everything that I keep on the outside for accessibility I have my smart water bottle with flip caps on the top here so I have one on each side the nice thing about the Mariposa is that you can reach back and grab your water bottles as well as put them back very easily on the right hand side here it's a nice low pocket and you can fit two smart water bottles in there the left side pocket is a little bit bigger good for things like trekking poles or a tent or even fitting extra water if you need to. In the braid of the pack, which is a feature that not a lot of ultralight packs have, I have my Garmin InReach Messenger. I don't really need to be navigating anything, which is the big feature that the InReach Mini 2 has over the Messenger. I like the extra battery life that I get with the Messenger. And then I have my Diddy bag where I keep all my ditties. I have a wall charger here, so if you are through hiking, you're gonna need a wall charger. I like this Spigen USB-C wall charger because it's lightweight and charges very fast. And then I have the Nightcore Carbo 10,000. I find 10,000 is good for about seven or eight days, even if I am using my phone a lot for either navigation or filming. And then toothbrush, toothpaste, lip chap, all my drugs, my little flashlight. This is the Rovivon A5. If you plan on doing a lot of night hiking, maybe you want a headlamp, but I find for most summer conditions, which is when a lot of people are through hiking, a Rovivon A5 flashlight is gonna do, do just fine. And then on the front pocket, this big stretchy front pocket, I have my rain jacket. This is the Z-Pax Virtus. I've been testing out a ton of ultralight rain jackets and this one has been my favorite. It doesn't really wet out. It has big pit zips on it and is a nice blue color. It's, it's great, it's packable too, which is really nice, which things like the Frog Togs, they're not very packable. I then have a whole bunch of other things in here like camp sandals. These are Mayfly sandals, super lightweight, but really nice to have around camp. If you do wanna take your shoes off, let your feet air out, or if your feet got wet from going through streams, then you can let them dry while wearing these. I also carry this DCF bowl, which I don't see a lot of people carrying. What I use this for is collecting water and then using soap in order to wash things like my socks or my underwear or my feet and body. I don't wanna be using soap in water sources, so I use this to collect the water and then bring it away from the stream or lake. For my filter, I'm using the Platypus Quick Draw with the included bag, super fast and has caps on both ends, which is really nice. I have a little Swedish cloth here. This is just to wipe down condensation off of the inside of my tent or to wipe rain off the outside so I'm not carrying that extra water weight and so my tent dries a little bit faster. I have my first aid kit in there as well with some drugs, repair kit, and bandages, that kind of fun stuff for blisters, which I don't really get. So it's more, most of the time I've used the first aid kit for bandaging up other people. And I have my tent stake bag. This is an awesome one from All Man's Right. I like that it has a nice wide opening so it's easy to reach in and grab your tent stakes. And I'm carrying MSR Groundhogs, the big size, as well as MSR Groundhog Minis. These are the 
different kind of stakes I use for my tent. Last but not least on the outside of my pack, we have my poop kit bag, just in this nice uh, Space Bear Pegs poop moji bag. First up, we have my trowel. This is a Bogler trowel, and they recently updated it with serrated edges on both sides. So it's a little bit more easy to cut through roots depending on which direction you're going in. Then I have hand sanitizer, soap, and a bidet. So you may have realized that I don't have toilet paper in here. That's because when I'm on a through hike, I find using a backcountry bidet system the best way to stay clean. I just feel so much fresher. You just put some soap on one hand, introduce some water to the back end with the other, and then use the soapy hand to kind of clean up back there. Afterwards, you wash your hands with some soap and water, put some hand sanitizer on there, and you're good to go. I find that method way better than smearing poop around, and if you're on trail smearing poop for four, five, six, seven days, that's gonna get pretty gross pretty quick. So it's nice to have a little bath for your butt every single day. Right at the top of my pack, I have my food bag, so we'll set that aside and then dive into it, and then my tent. I'm gonna get this set up, and then we can take a look at what I got going on here and why I think it's the best tent for a through hike. If you're looking to stock up on ultralight gear or need to replace an item while on a through hike, I highly recommend checking out the sponsor of today's video, Garage Growing Gear. They're the best store for ultralight gear and have everything you need from both cottage brands and then mainstream staples. If you're on a through hike and need to resupply, then being able to have everything come from one store really simplifies things by only needing to track one package, which is not only easier on you, but also better for the environment. My through hiking days are behind me, but I still love visiting the Garage Growing Gear website in order to discover new cottage brands and innovative gear that I probably would never see anywhere else. Head to the video description to check out Garage Growing Gear for yourself. They've recently added gear from top ultralight brands like Z-Packs, Tarp Tent, and Western Mountaineering. The tent is the Z-Packs Plex Solo, and don't worry, I do have some alternatives if a one-person tent that is this ultralight and this expensive isn't for you. But let me explain why I think the Z-Packs Plex Solo is the best through-hiking tent out there. First of all, the weight. If you're hiking mile after mile after mile for tons of months, weight really adds up. And the Z-Packs Plex Solo, as far as I know, is the lightest fully enclosed tent out there at 395 grams. That's insanely lightweight. Second of all, for a one-person tent, it's quite roomy. I spent 30 days on the Great Divide Trail in a tent that's not that much bigger than this, the Z-Packs Ultiplex, and I felt like I had tons of room. Even if it was raining and I was sheltering inside the tent, I still felt like I had enough room to kind of move around, get changed, and kind of just just live inside of the tent. I also really like that it only uses one trekking pole. If one of my trekking poles breaks, then I have the redundancy of my second trekking pole. You might think that you could just scrounge it together a stick or something like that in order to set up your tent if you need two trekking poles, but maybe you're in an area like I am right now in the desert where you can't find a stick. And in that kind of scenario, you're not gonna be able to get the tent set up effectively if you do need to be sheltering from rain or wind. If you want more room, like if you're going with somebody else, then check out the X-Mid Pro 2 from Dursing Gear or the 2 Plus if you want a roomy palace. And if you want something more affordable that's still gonna perform really well on a through hike, then check out the Six Moon Designs Lunar Solo or the Lunar Duo. Inside the tent, I have my sleep system all set up and I'm using a sleeping pad that I've never seen on a through hiking gear list before, as well as a pillow that is something that I've made up myself. So you've probably never seen it before either, unless you're a big fan of this channel. For my top insulation, I am using a quilt, a down quilt you really can't beat as far as weight to warmth weight ratios, as well as the comfort. I find I can toss and turn inside of a quilt and be very comfortable when I'm sleeping. This is the Enlightened Equipment Enigma 20 degree quilt. I think 20 degrees is a nice versatile temperature for a quilt and can cover you in pretty much any three season conditions that you might encounter in any of the major through hikes in North America. For my sleeping pad, underneath here I have the Exped Ultra 3R. I've been testing the 5R for over a year now and I found that that pad was super comfortable and warmer than its R value would lead you to believe. And for that reason, I think that the Ultra 3R, which is what I have right here, is going to be a great option for through hikers because you're going to be out in three season conditions. Conditions. Using the Ultra 3R instead of the 5R is going to save you a bunch of weight and makes it a comparable weight to the Thermarest X-Lite, which is one of the most popular pads out there. Even though the X-Lite would be warmer than the Ultra 3R, the Ultra 3R is so much more comfortable, in my opinion, than the X-Lite. For my pillow, I have this one that I custom made myself. It utilizes a Big Sky Dream Sleeper, which is a TPU bladder with, with really good support and nice height to it, so it's very comfortable. I sleep like a baby on this pillow. And then I took Dyneema patches with loops on them, stuck them to either side of the pillow, and then attached a shot cord to that so I can lock the pillow down onto my sleeping pad. It makes it so that as I toss and turn over the course of the night, my pillow doesn't kind of move, move away from me and I don't have to be chasing it across my tent as I'm trying to sleep. 
What's awesome about this pillow is not only the comfort, but the weight. It only weighs 52 grams, and like I said, weight adds up when you're on a through hike. This entire sleep system, the pillow, the pad, and the quilt, makes one of the most comfortable sleep systems that I've ever used, especially for how lightweight it is. I almost forgot my cook kit and my food bag. I'm just using a Dyneema food bag where I am right now, but make sure you're using uh, the appropriate container for all of your food and gear for where you are, whether that's a bear container or an ursac. But inside here, I have all my food, and then my cook system. I also have my pink titanium spoon in here. So if you are through hiking, definitely consider a pink titanium spoon because it's the best spoon that you can get and it's probably gonna make you hike faster as well as overall lighten the weight in your pack due to magic. But for my cook kit, I have a super ultralight compact cook kit. On the lid here, I have my fuel canister. So I just use 110 gram fuel canisters. I find that gets me through about 10 to 14 days of backpacking. And then inside this very lightweight 550 milliliters Tokes titanium pot, I just have two more little items. I have the BRS 3000 stove. I've used this thing for years now and it just keeps on trucking. I love the BRS 1000 stove. It only weighs 25 grams and is going to boil water for you, no problem. You may have noticed that the pot doesn't have any pot handles, so in order to pour water out of it when it's hot, I have this little pot gripper from Sulik 46, it only weighs three grams, so lighter than the handles on a pot. And I like this more than pot handles because not only is it lighter, but I find it a lot easier to grab a pot with boiling water in it and then pour that into my freeze dry meal or whatever I wanna be adding that hot water to. I'm not gonna go into detail about all the clothing that I like to wear when I'm hiking as well as at camp, but if you are interested in those details, go check out my Pack Wizard gear list down in the video description. I'll have it linked down there as well as all the gear that we're talking about today. But I do wanna talk about insulation because I think that's very important. And I like to use the Enlightened Equipment Torrid Apex Jacket. It's not gonna be as compressible as down, but it's almost just as lightweight and it's gonna perform better when damp or moist. So if it's raining or if you're sweating into it, then it's gonna keep you a lot warmer and it's not gonna be as compromised as a down jacket. It's not the most fashionable jacket out there, but as a through hiker who probably smells like garbage, fashion is probably the last thing on your mind. If you've watched Jupiter Hikes YouTube channel, he's an awesome through hiker who just hiked the Great Divide Trail as well. And you're kind of considering using barefoot shoes because he uses barefoot shoes and he's able to hike thousands of miles. Then go check out this video right up here where as someone who doesn't use barefoot shoes for backpacking and hiking very often, I test out using barefoot shoes for three days straight on a very long trip to see how my feet would do. 